In today's program, we interview Julie Erlob. She's the author of the Business Sustainability Handbook, founder and managing partner of Tiger Company, and is recognized as one of the top thought leaders in social media for sustainability. Now, when she's not helping companies sort out their sustainability policies, you can find her on the back of a mountain bike as she is an avid endurance mountain bike racer and has competed in the National Ultra Endurance Series, 24 hour mountain bike national championships and more so with all that exciting stuff let's go and join alan and julie in the studio now and find out how paleo is so central to a lot of what julie does good morning julie and uh, welcome to the local paleo show i understand you're a specialist in sustainability and a paleo practitioner can you tell us about your background Yes, well first, Ellen, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm thrilled to be a part of this conversation because I think it's unique and uh, offers great value. So a little about me, I, um, as you mentioned, I have a, a background in sustainability and social media. So I help green and sustainable businesses tell their story on social media. But um, more interesting to that equation is that I'm an endurance mountain bike racer. And that is what really, um, combined with sustainability, uh, targeted my focus around a paleo diet or somewhat of a variance of a paleo diet. So currently, uh, I would say that I am a modified paleo diet practitioner with somewhat of a, a vegetarian twist as of the last two months. So um, if you had to summarize it, I'd say that it's... Um, it's an interesting approach because I have a, an open mind to nutrition as to health and wellness as well as its combination in sports performance. How do you manage to combine a vegetarian and a paleo diet because typically a paleo diet is focused on uh, animal protein. Absolutely. In fact, um, it's only been within the last couple of months that I have shifted to the vegetarian diet and I did it as an experiment. Um, to see what the difference is because previously I as an endurance mountain bike racer I felt compelled to consume uh, a great deal of meat lean protein um, according to paleo um, and as you know the enzymes and so forth help with muscle and um, re endurance repair and so forth this season I am not racing so my um, requirements my nutritional requirements are a little bit different than what they would have been in the past so I thought, okay, this is a perfect time to kind of compare the contrast between the nutritional requirements of racing versus the nutritional requirements of training. Because I'm still training, like 10 to 12 hours a week, but I'm not racing at the intensity. So um, it, it's, it's distinct and different. And like I said, it is an experiment. And also it's an experiment from a sustainability perspective because there are those in the sustainability space that advocate against uh, a meat, you know, they're, they go vegan or vegetarian. So um, again, it's reflecting the open-mindedness of it all, but um, it boils back down to that basic essence of following your own instincts for your own body, right? As opposed to paying attention to all the information that's out there in the world and really touching base with what are your requirements at this time, because it's a dynamic process, it's not static. Can you tell us what your current diet would be? Yes. Well, currently, because of the, the vegetarian focus, it's um, it's opened my eyes to different sources of protein. However, it was the paleo diet that really got me to make the choice around the vegetarian in the sense that, like, currently I eat uh, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, um, nuts, and although vegetarians, I think, eat more grains, um, the paleo diet is really advocates against that and that was something that I really took from paleo that I still maintained as well as I don't eat a lot of dairy and um, about two years ago um, it was really when I made this shift because I was I was looking at some of the different cookbooks um, and unfortunately I didn't have your cookbook available but uh, there's one um, it wasn't so much a cookbook it, it was the um, Fat Chance book by Dr. Lutnig, I think, or Lustig, I forget, forget his name, but it was around sugar. And right. um, that's, yeah, and that's what led me to the paleo, which led me to the vegetarian, which is where I am now. 
So the trick, though, is getting quality protein and enough protein with vegetarian, right, mm -hmm. in relation to sports performance. And I think that um, at the end of July is when I'm going to reevaluate that choice and see how that's working. It's, it's been an interesting approach. So for our vegetarian friends out there, uh, can you spell it out, uh, for example, uh, because if you're not eating grains and pulses, then how do you get your complete proteins? Well, I've kind of supplemented with some hemp, um, hemp protein powder. I've used a lot of that. Um, I've started paying more attention to the protein content in um, the vegetables and how to combine them. Um, a lot of uh, advocates are around like rice and quinoa. I don't, I, like I said, the paleo thing with the rice I'm not so fond of. I have introduced in moderate amounts some quinoa. And then um, I've explored some new supplements um, for micronutrients. They're not so much around the protein, but it's a mulberry, white mulberries. They're not so high in the protein, but they're really high in micronutrients. So like I said, I'm still in this exploratory phase. And that's, I think, the complication, right? That, that's the advantage of following the paleo diet versus, say, a vegetarian diet. When you talk about paleo, it gives you, a, a, I think, a clearer roadmap if you are embarking on that path. Whereas for me, even though I feel like I have some sound nutrition and a, and a background around it, that going vegetarian has been a, bit, a little bit more challenging in terms of where do I find those complete proteins that meet my requirements of, say, not having dairy. So I'm not eating eggs at the moment and I'm not having meat. So how do I do that and not have so many grains and mixing with beans because I'm not doing the bean thing. So you see what I'm saying? It's not as clear of a roadmap as, say, a paleo diet would be. I have a very good source of sea vegetable protein, which is blue-green algae. Yes. Have you tried that? I have. Well, you can get, you can get powders. Um, like at Whole Foods, uh, I'll go and I'll, right. I've experimented with different powders, and that's helpful. But the trick is finding it to be tasteful and something that you yearn and look forward to having as opposed to just eating to live, right? I mean, part of the, right, the right. beauty of food is that culture and sharing with others and having it be something that, you know, when you go out with friends, I mean, you're not like, oh, can't have that. Oh, not that either. I mean, like, <laughs> and like, you to go to dinner. <laughs> so, um, you know, it has to be a lifestyle that works. And that is, um, you know, I can take when I speak at different events and conferences and, you know, and it also has to be one that resonates with me. Like my body has changed. I'm 47 now. So my body has changed in its nutritional needs and what it prefers and, when I was younger, and I think all of those factors play into it, um, into the decision making and making it an enjoyable experience rather than just something to, otherwise, I mean, why even eat them? Just have some lab product, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds to me like if you're not eating dairy, not no eggs, then you're vegan, really. Sort of, I guess so. I hate to put a label on it because I use the paleo as my guidepost, right? But when I started saying total vegetarian or vegan and so forth, then for me, what comes up are the rules. Supposedly, you can have this or you can't have that. And for my mindset, having can and can't triggers things within me that create resistance or lack or um, uh, just emotional things that then trigger different types of eating for me. So I've noticed with myself if I just stay away from the like the stereotypes and the trigger words and pay more attention to what is it that I want to eat? What is it that my body is telling me it desires? Um, what's of interest and curiosity to me around food? <laughs> then, um, then I find it naturally uh, flowing in a direction that works. And that's since the, the paleo aspect and then the, the um, vegetarian and so forth. Um, Whereas if I get stuck in, oh, I can only have this or I can't have that, um, then I get into a logical discussion and then it becomes a power struggle within myself and I'm not eating based on what my body wants. I'm following some rule that I read in Cosmopolitan magazine or something. <laughs> it takes me outside of myself. Yeah, well, there are plenty of people who do follow Cosmopolitan for their dietary choices. <laughs> It's wonderful, and, and maybe it is really good advice to where they are in their path, but uh, for me, I just really discovered, initially, it was getting, you know, really eliminating sugar in my diet, and as an endurance athlete, you know, there's a lot of 
um, marketing and advertising around uh, nutritional products when you're on the bike. So if you're on the bike for 12 and 14 hours, you know there are requirements that say, oh, you should have this much grams of sugar and this many grams of protein per hour mm. and fluids in order to sustain this. And for a long time, I subscribed to that belief system. But what then I realized was, well, what if I do back off on the sugar? Not just on the bike, but off the bike as well. Mm. How does that affect my body? And then how does that affect my performance? And how does that affect my brain chemistry, so to speak, when I'm at work, right? In terms of clarity and mental focus and productivity. And then that, of course, led to the paleo, right? Yeah. Because at first, getting rid of sugar was like, oh, my God, no, no, I can't do that, right? And this big uproar, you know, I mean, I took it out of my coffee. I took it out of everything. And so then, you know, then it was paleo, right, which led me to eating more and more vegetables before I didn't eat nearly as many vegetables. And, um, you know, now, I mean, just steamed broccoli is like heaven. I mean, I could just gobble that up. I mean, just boring steamed broccoli because I'm like Alan here. I mean, I'm lucky to boil water. So, you know, um, and then, of course, then that led to the next, you know, expression of, okay, so what else can I do and how does that feel for me? It's been a wonderful journey. I, I'm really enjoying it. it it's it's it awakened my curiosity around food. Excellent, excellent. Have you noticed an increase in your intake in fat? I have, somewhat. And um, and I don't recall if avocados, because I'm not really sure if they're paleo okay. But um, yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, I've. I enjoy avocados tremendously and when I was eating meat I was eating the fat on the meat and um, I found that to be really helpful in fact my coach had mentioned that um, many of his athletes when they had made the transition as well to eating paleo and eating the fats on the meats and not cutting it off and having to be so uh, lean um, or feeling good on the bike post and uh, post race and during training as well you mentioned uh some of your friends are um, considering uh, eating animal-based protein not being sustainable, yet we've had uh, some very interesting discussion with uh, farmers, new farmers that are actually uh, creating whole, the whole um, aspect of raising the animals in a sustainable way. So uh, I'm hearing some contradiction from, from both sides. Yes, and, and, and I can see why, because um, being in this space, I, I see the same type of contradiction, and I think that that's not unlike everything else that we see in the sustainability space, meaning it's still evolving. Sustainability as a whole is evolving. What it means to be sustainable is evolving from a corporation standpoint, from a personal standpoint. So what I like to do is point back to the individual and say, what is your definition of sustainability and how does that resonate with you in terms of your values? And then how is that expressed? So for me, for instance, when I was eating meat, um, which has been my whole entire life except for these last two months, um, you know, the idea around it was uh, sourcing it locally, uh, grass-fed uh, meat is more sustainable to me than the corn um, in the sense when they're fed corn because corn is like monocropping and so forth. Um, Non-GMO, right? Because I'm yeah. opposed to that. And uh, while I'm not specialist, while I'm not a specialist in, the, in those two specific fields in terms of agriculture and GMO and so forth, um, it's a big movement. And local uh, sourcing can provide uh, many benefits, much like what I think like bees, you know, with the honey to local bees in terms of the nutrients that are local to that area actually help the uh, people that live in that space, right? Uh, so it helps the economy and, and other factors in terms of sourcing locally. Hmm. So, I mean, when you look at the bigger picture of the sustainability, it's not so much just is it the meat, right, or is it the ecosystem that the farmer creates, but it's the economic perspective, right, the sustainability from an economic wholesome hmm. space right, right. Community and um, how it impacts people. So it can, like I said, it varies in terms of how you define sustainability and those values and how it resonates with you. For the farmers, there's a you know a more sustainable way for them to allow the animals to grow and uh, grass feed uh, during a rotation program that doesn't affect the environment as much as the traditional or the more intense way of raising uh, cattle. So we we talked a couple of weeks ago to the um, Savory Foundation and they are advocate 
and they are teaching all over the world uh, farmers' methods on how to rotate their their crops and allow the the animals to move around and basically create the cycle of life that keeps on uh, repeating itself and it's not affecting the environment.